Like I've said before, there are many different aspects of the indie market that make it a great place to find new, fun games. I understand that there are many games that are at low effort, but there are a great amount of gems that don't always get the attention that they deserve. The indie space allows gamers to find retro-inspired experiences. These types of games are not usually focused on having the most cutting-edge graphics, but rather using classical visuals with traditional and good gameplay. I also found indies to be a solid space for developers to fill a void that was left by the AAA market. We saw this with the Castlevania series. For several years, fans have been requesting Konami to continue their series with new games. And Konami has largely ignored those fans that would like to experience more adventures within the Castlevania setting. This has left a void. So some of the talented people behind the Metroidvania Castlevania games left the company to go fund their own project. They figured if Konami did not want to make more Castlevania games, but the fans wanted it, they could provide those experiences for those fans. So these developers took to Kickstarter to help fund their project and ultimately gauge the interest in Castlevania. The Kickstarter was a huge success and showed these developers that the fans really wanted this void filled. With the recent release of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, the developers were able to deliver on their promise. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is a proper and quality spiritual successor to Symphony of the Night. Fans enjoyed it and they were very content with the game. This is a great example of a big company deciding to not continue a franchise that their fans love, but also having a set of developers that saw this audience and wanted to make a game that really fit that mold. You see this a lot within the indie market, and the same can be said for another one of Konami series. Contra is another beloved series, especially for its relentless action and punishing difficulty. There was a new Contra that was announced at the recent E3, but the game looks more like a spin-off twin-stick shooter than a proper Contra experience. And with this, we again look to the indie market to potentially help to fill a void left by a big company. Blazing Chrome is inspired by Contra and hopes to provide a similar experience. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my review for Blazing Chrome. Blazing Chrome is a new retro side-scrolling shooter that focuses on providing relentless and chaotic action. The gameplay is very much the focus of this game. Your main objective is to stay alive and shoot everything that's thrown at you. You will die in one hit, so every enemy is deadly. You have a bunch of options to assist you in combat. As you progress throughout the levels, you'll obtain better weapons. You get different ones, like grenade launchers, pulse guns, or wave guns. These all come with different types of attacks, and they are much more powerful than your base gun. The trick with the guns is that if you die with one of these guns equipped, you're gonna lose that gun and you need to then try and find it again later in the level. So you will need to try and keep an eye on the enemy as they fire so you can take a quick opportunity to change back to your base gun so you don't lose any of your special guns. There are some drones that will assist you as well. You have an attack drone that provides you with another gun and a defense drone that allows you to take a few hits before dying. Each of the weapons are fun to shoot, the action is especially solid and the controls are very good. Most of the levels have you running around, shooting everything, along with some platforming. The game likes to throw some different environments to help change up the normal action. There is a level where you get to ride a bike and take out all the enemies in motion. There are a nice handful of sequences where you gain the ability to use a mech. You get a health bar so you can take a few hits before it explodes. Some come with guns and others with drills. 
The drill is useful because it opens up some other areas while you're going along in the map that have some items for you to be able to grab. The final piece to change up the action are the boss fights and these can be some really tough encounters. You will fight bosses at a regular rate, from mid-level bosses to end-level bosses. The bosses very much require you to learn their patterns. In some cases, there might be a boss that follows a boss, so this is something to really be prepared for where you think you're out of a fight, but you're just entering into another one. There is a large amount of frustration that can come from the bosses, but there's a nice amount of satisfaction from their defeat or when you start to learn their patterns. And while you are working your way up to a boss fight, another thing to keep in mind is to save some of the stronger weapons so you have them to use during the boss fight and you're not just stuck with the base game machine gun. Blazing Chrome feels like a quarter munching arcade game that is a lot of fun. One of the best aspects of the game and the preferred way to play it is in co-op. The game is so much better with a friend. These types of games are meant to be enjoyed with someone else. Like I said before, the focus of the game is on the action, not the story, but the game does deliver a pretty cool opening cutscene. Blazing Chrome is a blast to play, but I do have a few areas of improvement I wanted to mention along with some ideas to extend the gameplay. I do want to make note that this game is hard and unforgiving. It is very much an old school style game, and you should know this going in and don't expect it to be a cakewalk. Since there is a focus on co-op, I do think a simple horde style survival mode would have been a great addition here. When playing in co-op, the speed bot pickup can be problematic since it causes one player to move really fast and the other player doesn't have one and they're trying to catch up. There are a few sequences where the ground is falling from under you and if your friend grabs the speed bot pickup, then you're gonna be going really fast and then your other person is gonna get stuck behind. So if you're playing in co-op, just skip the speed bot altogether. I do think if the game is going to provide a speed bot, then it should provide two of them in co-op. When you're in the action, it's a blast, along with the awesome soundtrack. Here are a few tracks from the game. Overall, Blazing Chrome is a solid game that pays tribute to Contra. The action is engaging and chaotic. You never get a moment to breathe and you can die very easily. It very much gives off that feeling of being at an arcade and playing a very solid but hard game. The difficulty will frustrate you, but the victories provided from the satisfaction of the boss fights are great. I think this is a really good game, but the price does seem just a tad bit too high to recommend to casual players. If you're a big Contra fan, then I would recommend you check this one out right away. For everyone else, I would wait for it on a sale, but either way, if you want a fun co-op game, then definitely check this one out at some point.